Good morning, it's Marian Waldeck here, and once again a privilege to be sharing this devotional on this 525th day of our devotions. And a big thanks to my mom in Chicago who has been listening every morning to these devotionals since the start of lockdown, and to all you faithful devotional listeners, um, it's been a wonderful journey to be on together with you. And today my theme is called The Power of One. And we continue with our study of James Harnish's Disciples' Heart. And the scripture reading this morning is read from 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 1 to 35. So please go ahead and read this on your own. I'm going to summarize it for you. This chapter is about David and his 600 men who were in flight from the mad King Saul. They were protecting the shepherds and their flocks in the area that were being poached. David requests food for himself and his band of 600 men from Nabal, who was a wealthy but foolish farm owner. When Nabal refuses David and his maiden food and water, insulting David and his band as riffraff, the young warrior David and his men prepare themselves for bloodshed. Enraged, David swears an oath to destroy Nabal and all his men. Overhearing the dialogue, one of the servants runs to Abigail, who is Nabal's wife, begging her to intervene. She quickly assembles an elaborate feast which is loaded up on donkeys and sent in advance. She then intercepts David to persuade him against fulfilling his violent oath. Abigail, in a long, eloquent speech, repeatedly addresses David as Lord and herself as the maid servant. Abigail appeals to him to shed no blood. She promises that if he restrains himself from blood guilt, then God will dispatch of David's enemies. She further prophesies that God will establish a sure house for David, foreshadowing Nathan's prophecy of an everlasting dynasty for the king. The enraged David listens intently and his heart softens. He praises Abigail's good sense and expresses gratitude that she restrained him from bloodshed, uttering an oath to counter the prior violent one. David's restraint from slaying his rival demonstrates his worthiness of kingship. Abigail's persuasive speech cleared the way for David to rightfully claim his kingship, and Abigail's quick, humble, smart, and forward-thinking prevented an unnecessary war. In Abigail, we see a picture of a wise woman who made a difference by seeking a non-violent way to resolve the conflict. She did what she could, and God used her efforts in ways that went far beyond all expectations. When we look at the aching needs of our world today, the hunger, the poverty, the high levels of unemployment in South Africa and around the world, at the war in the Ukraine, the spread of COVID and other diseases, what it's done to the world, the economic injustices, the ethnic and political conflicts, we can easily become so overwhelmed. What is God calling us to do in all this? Abigail was called to divert a war. Well, you may be thinking, No ways. I'm not in a position to do that. I'm just an ordinary person. But how can God use me? Sometimes we think that it requires a lot of effort, sacrifice, influence, and even resources to make a dent in our very community. However, even the small things we do can actually make a big difference. Every Christian can make a difference in the lives of others. Sometimes it takes no more than small gestures to do so. These pointers may be helpful. To be more generous. 
Even the smallest acts of generosity can go a long way for others. Sacrificing your time, as little as it may be, your efforts, and even finances to help out those in need can make a big difference. In Hebrews 13 verses 16, it reminds us, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. We've started a blanket drive to distribute blankets to those in need this winter. We'd love to hear from you if you could help us sew or knit squares or donate blankets that you may not be using. Let's touch lives by keeping those in need warm this winter. The next pointer is to share a word of encouragement. Choose to speak words of life and encouragement. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 11 says, Therefore encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. The next pointer is to respond to hate with love. There's a reason why Jesus commands us in Matthew 5 verse 44 saying, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love always impacts others in a positive way. The next pointer is to serve where no one wants to serve. There will be times in your workplace, in your community, or even your church where no one wants to serve. Those times of seeming drought will also be opportunities for you to step out and serve where you're needed. Galatians 6 verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. The next pointer is sharing and expressing respect, which is not really the norm today. But there's undoubtedly a powerful magic behind treating others with respect. It builds confidence in them that makes all the difference. When we choose to look up to others instead of looking down to them, we impact people greatly. When we add up the numbers of people who have not yet heard the good news, experience the love of God and become disciples of Jesus Christ yet, the tasks of making disciples for Jesus can also seem impossible. How do we go about this? Well, I just love the slogan that Andre Funnenberg has given to our ransom, missional outreach arm of the church. And the slogan says this, We go about helping one person at a time. Well, Mother Teresa's famous quote also says, Never worry about the numbers. Help one person at a time and always start with the person nearest you. Lives are restored, people are saved, disciples are made, and the world is ultimately transformed through ordinary people like you and me, who offer their lives as instruments of God's peace, love, and justice. One life helping one person at a time always makes a difference. James Harnish highlights that Jesus compares the presence of the kingdom of God in this world to small things that make a big difference. A mustard seed planted in the ground, leaven or yeast in a loaf of bread, a candle burning in the darkness. His parables are vivid reminders that often the transformation of the kingdoms of this world into the kingdom of God's happens through individuals like Abigail, who do what they can to make a difference, believing that God is able to use those efforts in ways that go far beyond anything we can imagine. Abigail is a wonderful example to us of a faithful person doing what she could as an agent of God's love in a broken and hurting world. Her witness is an invitation to every one of us to see the opportunities that God gives us to be these agents of his love, compassion, justice, and peace. So pointers just to reflect on during this week. The first one is, can you name a person whom you admire because he or she responded to a need in your community? 
If so, describe what this person did to make a difference. Secondly, ponder on, do you have an Abigail in your life? Who has given you wise counsel, contrary to the world's wisdom, that saved your day? And thirdly, is there perhaps someone in your life whom you could be an Abigail to by providing that wise counsel to? So, let us conclude in prayer. O oh dear Father God, may I always remember the power of one. The one life you have given me is not for my own selfish gain and development, but for yours a life that matters and that can bring glory to your kingdom. May I seek your peace in all situations, just as Abigail did. Help me, Lord, to help others find their way into your kingdom. I want to serve others so that they can experience your love. Use the talents, the resources, the time, the experiences the spiritual growth and everything else you have given me. Use me, Lord, for your glory to further your kingdom here on earth as you have willed us to. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day, everyone.